Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back, I'm Jimbo, and today we're talking about the 15 mistakes that even the pros still make when detailing. You would honestly think after years of experience we'd stop making these mistakes, right? Well, not always, but the good news is I'm here to help you avoid them and detail smarter, so let's get right into it. And really, I just wanna say, the reason why we still make these mistakes is because we say, this is the way we've always done things, right? So the second we stop saying that, we could actually learn from some of these mistakes. So right into it, mistake number one is not having a plan to maximize efficiency. See, first things first, not having a plan can kill your efficiency. You might have all the right products, all the right tools, all the latest and greatest, but if you're jumping in between steps, you'll waste time, energy, and even risk damaging the car. So before any detail, I take five minutes mentally to just walk through the entire process, see the condition of the car, what I need to do. Um, so, so here's what I really do. I, I break it down into phases, right? Similar to layers, it's phases when it comes to maximizing efficiency. So the exterior wheels, engine bay, interior. Then within those, I break it down even further. I start with the dirtiest and most challenging parts first when I'm fresh, right? Dirty interior, the wheels, the engine bay. And then I move on to the cleaner areas. Also, I prepare all my products beforehand. I lay them out in order. Uh, I lay them out in the order that I'll use them. And that way I'm not like scrambling mid-wash or, you know, anything like that. This saves time. And if I need to warm up the steamer, I'll do that. Uh, get my vacuum ready, the different attachments, the different brushes I may be using, fill up any buckets that I may be using. Um, I do that. So the key point is that efficiency isn't just about speed. It's about avoiding mistakes uh, that happen when you're trying to multitask or make last minute decisions, right? Mistake number two is a big one. It's using wash and wax soaps. Now, this is not as common as it used to be, um, but I still do see it a lot. And one of the biggest, uh, and it really is, I think, one of the biggest product mistakes. There's another one that I have coming later that is also another big mistake too. But using wash and wax soaps can actually hinder the hydrophobic properties of your car's coating or sealant. Um, sure, they clean the car, kind of, but the wax component actually leaves behind a film that messes with your ceramic coating or sealant or wax or whatever. Um, and I learned this when I was testing my product, Tough as Shell, and I started just randomly pulling soaps that I had on the shelf and testing it. And I noticed that when, and whenever I used a wash and wax soap, it would seemingly kill Tough as Shell. But what I found out is that it's not killing it. It's just masking the properties of that because of this film that's being laid down. So that's why when you use something like the Super Soaper, you're getting a pure cleaning power. You're getting the, the uh, pure cleaning power without any of that wax residue or that film. So the Super Soaper is designed to break down dirt and grime while preserving the hydro hydrophobic properties of your existing coating or sealant, right? So key point here, wash and wax soaps are just outdated. There's really no need for them. They're, they don't offer enough protection to really do anything, right? Especially if you have a ceramic coating or a sealant, they're just going to interfere with the hydrophobic properties. So you just want a pure soap that won't interfere with any of your protection layers on the car to give you kind of a false read on, you know, if your coating is dying or not. So that's a, that's a really big one. Mistake number three is not degreasing the windows before you clean them. This one's simple, but it's honestly critical. Not degreasing your windows before cleaning them is a major oversight. So this is really only for, you know, heavy duty cleaning. If you're doing more of a maintenance clean, you're not going to have to do this. But your windows actually collect all kinds of contaminants, right? Grease, oil, oil from your hands, oil from your kids' hands, right? Uh, road grime. And a, a regular glass cleaner won't cut through this and you'll really just get a streaky mess. So you want to make sure that if you are dealing with really dirty windows, uh, especially obviously on the inside, the windshield that doesn't get hit often, you want to degrease it first, do a really heavy dilution, a lot of water. You don't need to go crazy with this, but using a degreaser or an APC um, or even the super sober diluted down will help kind of with that bulk cleaning of that first layer and then you can move on to using your standard glass cleaner. So I personally always degrease the windows first, especially the front windshield, side windows. Um, and it just, like I said, gives your glass cleaner that much starting point to do a better job. And then it'll help you get those crystal clear streak-free results. 
every time. Um, windows are just a nightmare, but I have another window t- tip and hack um, coming up, so make sure you keep listening. So, mistake number four, not pre-soaking before washing. I know pre-soaking is a bigger thing um, in other countries. For some reason, it has never really caught on in the United States, which I am on a mission to change that because it is so effective. It's so easy and it's so effective. And if there's one step you should never skip, it's pre-soaking the car. Not pre-soaking your car before washing, I think is just a major mistake. Um, and again, pre-soaking with something like the Super Soaper, I put two ounces in a pump sprayer, quickly go around the car. If you want to even use this as a uh, pre-soak on your tires, it'll actually brown the tires as well. And using something, again, like the Super Soaper breaks down the dirt and grime, loosening it up so it doesn't scratch your paint when you go to wash, right? The, and really, the Super Soaper is a game changer for this step. Um, foam your car, let it dwell, I I pre-soak and then foam on top of the pre-soak, let it dwell for three to five minutes, and you can literally see the dirt lifting off and running into the foam on the ground. Again, you're not scrubbing the dirt into the paint, which means fewer swirls, scratches, and the long run. So pre-soaking is a must to avoid marring the paint. Let the foam do the work for you. Let the soap do the work for you. It's less work for you, and so I think they got it right across the pond with this pre-soaking business um but it's hasn't really caught on in the states but i think it really should and needs to uh and it goes right into mistake number five that i see is using the two bucket method we have this infatuation with using the two bucket method but we don't pre-soak and it's crazy to me i i know it's a bit controversial but the two bucket method it's just simply outdated and in some cases it's not even as safe as you think so hear me out using one bucket with multiple clean wash mitts or even better like I said, pre-soaking with the super soaper is far superior approach. And that's, if you want a safest clean possible, what I would do is I would pre-soak, right? Go in directly to foaming the car, letting that dwell for three to five minutes. You could rinse all that off and then have multiple clean wash mitts in, or even just microfiber towels, which is my favorite, in a bucket and then you do your contact wash from there. That is way safer, way easier, and you're actually gonna use less water than the two bucket method because the two bucket method can still lead to contaminants getting back onto your wash mitt. And honestly, who wants to spend all that extra time dunking and rinsing? Instead, multiple clean wash mitts, single bucket, switching them out as you go, um, and then of course pre-soaking and foaming and then rinsing the foam and then going into your your pressure wash. This is going to save time, reduce the risk, and honestly, just ditch the two bucket method for a far more efficient, safer approach to washing your car. Mistake number six is something that we do all too often. I'm trying to get better at this myself, um, and that is not wearing gloves and other protective clothing, something that I used to always wear shorts. Heck, when I first started out, I wore sandals and shorts to wash cars, and I don't know if it's me getting older or whatever, but um, it really is something that I'm taking much more precautions with, and it's safety, right? So let's talk safety. Gloves, mask, other protective gear. Not wearing gloves is a big, big mistake. It's something that I still miss doing often, but I try to do more and more. Honestly, some of these chemicals we use in detailing can be very harsh on your skin, And over time, repeated exposure to them can lead to like skin irritation or even long-term health issues. It's actually something that doesn't get talked about with products and product safety, chemical safety. Um, A lot of these uh, brands that are, um, you know, can't be sold in California or can't even be sold in the United States or um, can't be, um, you know, are, are cheaper, a lot of people don't realize that, that it's expensive not only for the R&D, but also to choose a chemical or a raw material ingredient that is more expensive to make that product safer. And honestly, not to harp on my own product brand, but Tough as Shell came from this kind of idea. So Tough as Shell is a water-based spray ceramic um, that I developed. And at the time that it was released in 2019, I was only selling it under my private label brand. Um, not the Jimbo's detailing brand, 
which is a story for another day. Um, but I developed that one-on-one with my chemist. And when it was developed, there was no water bra- water-based spray ceramics on the market. They were all solvent-based. Now, this has slowly started to change, but solvent-based products are very annoying to work with. They're very stinky. They were stinking up the whole shop, whether it's Adams or 303. I just stay away from solvent sprays altogether. When you talk about a wipe-on coating, that's a little bit different because they're not getting mist into the air. But if you think about solvent ceramic sprays that are being misted into the air, those could go into your lungs, and that could be very damaging. So I always try to wear gloves when using harsh chemicals, the greasers, wheel cleaners. Um, I try to always have my headphones in for my ears, uh, especially using loud tools like the polisher or the blower over time can cause hearing damage. Um So throw on some ear protection. Eyes, I know for sure I damaged my eyes looking uh, in the reflection on the paint work, which I'm super bummed about. So, um, you know, you may want to step it up to respirators and masks when you're working with aerosol products or ceramic sprays. Uh, Sunglasses, definitely. I get made fun of a lot in my YouTube videos. Why do you still wear your sunglasses inside? It's like, because I forget to take them off. So even down to, I've started to wear pants when I detail cars because the other day I was cleaning some carpets and as I used the carpet brush I looked down and I had just sprayed all the dirt all over my legs and then I got a rash from it and I was like oh my gosh this is disgusting one that I have someone else's dirt on my leg now but two now I have a rash and it's super itchy so I started wearing pants I'm thinking about long sleeves it's going to be more difficult during the summer times but you know really making sure that we're here for the long run and making sure that you have proper PPE. So protect yourself with gloves, ear protection, mask. Don't underestimate the long-term effects of repeated exposure to detailing chemicals either. I know some of these chemicals are cheaper. They're, you know, but they're cheaper for a reason. And there is a lot of harmful ingredients in these, uh, these, a lot of these chemicals. Mistake number seven, waxing in circular motions. I've been told this over and over and over in my YouTube videos. And have you ever been told to wax in circular motions? I bet you have, right? That waxing in circular motions creates swirl marks. It does not. It does not increase the chance of leaving swirl marks in your paint. I've seen it overcomplicated. I've seen it, you know, explained a hundred different ways to Sunday, but It actually looks dumber when you're applying in straight lines. So you do not need to apply in a straight line motion. It is not safer. It does not reduce the chances of leaving swirl marks. Swirl marks are caused by machines, not by hand in most cases. So forget, you know, you're causing swirl marks by, you know, applying in circle motions. Apply the wax or ceramic spray however you want. Straight lines, circular lines. How You just need to get it on the paint, Okay. Maximize efficiency, stop overcomplicating this, stop overthinking about it. Another thing to stop worrying about is mistake number eight, washing in direct sunlight, okay? Now, let's talk about a myth that needs to be completely busted. Having spent 14 years as a mobile detailer, I could tell you washing your car in direct sunlight is totally fine. Back in the day, this used to be a huge no-no, Because the water would dry too fast, it'd leave spots, the chemicals weren't ready for it, the soap would leave spots, whatever. But honestly, with modern detailing products, especially if you've got deionized water, this is something that you do not need to worry about. I have washed literally thousands of cars in direct sunlight, and I've never, ever, ever had an issue. I will say, deionized water systems are great for preventing water spots. And many new soaps, including the Super Soaper, are specific, specifically designed to work in direct sunlight. Um, just rinse as you go if you don't have deionized water. Or use something like a wax and dry product or something that you know will keep the surface wet. But if you're using something like the Super Soaper, it's not going to harm it to dry on the surface. I don't recommend it. Uh, but it's not going to harm it. And with most, most soaps, here's a little hack... With most most soaps, you will be okay and not get water spots on the surface as long as the soap is on the surface. 
it's after you rinse the soap off that you need to worry about. But if you are serious about detailing your car, I would highly, highly recommend getting some sort of deionized water system going. It just makes detailing so much more fun, so much more enjoyable. I actually had a Jimbo's detailing customer come in uh, to the shop not too long ago, and we talked about this, and he, you know, I encouraged him to get a uh, DNS water system because washing his car was part of his therapy, was part of his outlet, was part of something that he really enjoyed doing, and it just makes it that much more enjoyable. It's one of those areas that, you know, you do want to spend a little bit, um, a little bit more money on, a little bit more time with. It's just that much easier. Mistake number nine, thinking a paste wax is better than a ceramic spray. So let's talk about wax, right? There's this belief out there, especially with some old school guys, that paste waxes are somehow better than ceramic sprays. But honestly, that's just not the case anymore. Paste waxes, especially ones like Carnuba, they actually can melt off in high heat and they don't offer the same level of protection as synthetic ceramic sprays do, right? And here's why paste wax isn't always the best choice. One, it's labor intensive. It requires a lot of buffing and it melts off in the sun. On one hand, ceramic sprays. On the other hand, I will say, sprays like Tough as Shell, they're easy to apply. They provide much longer lasting hydrophobic effect. They can withstand heat much better than natural waxes. And they add real protection to your paint, real paint protection durability that can last up to a year with minimal maintenance. They're also easier to reapply when needed, unlike paste waxes, which has to be you know stripped off before reapplying or just takes so much more time. And ceramic sprays just outperform paste waxes in nearly every category from durability to easy use. So forget the wax on, wax off, hassle, and go with a ceramic spray like Tough as Shell. I know some of you may be seeing, well, I like the glow of a paste wax. I like the glow. That was one major thing that I incorporated into the Tough as Shell was to make sure that you could get that glow out of it with the easy use of a ceramic spray. A lot of other ceramic sprays can't offer that deep, rich shine. Something like Jimbo's Tough as Shell actually does both. Super durable and easy to use, doesn't streak, and offers a that real rich depth shine. So I'll make sure to link everything I talk about in the uh, description below as well. Mistake number 10, not clay barring your car before you polish. So polishing is a crucial step in detailing, especially if you're going to be applying a wipe on ceramic coating. But if you're not clay barring the car first, you're, you're making a huge mistake. So clay barring removes embedded contaminants from the paint, right? It would almost be like, not washing your car before trying to polish your paint. Um, so clay barn removes embedded contaminants from the paint surface, giving you a clean bare slate to pol polish. Otherwise, you're polishing basically over this dirt and grime, which won't lead to swirls or damage. It'll just clog up your pad a lot sooner, and it's going to take a lot more effort to get the paint polished how you want. So Klein pulls out these contaminants that even washing can't remove, things like fallout, you know, stubborn grime. Uh, so without Klein, these contaminants stay trapped in the paint, and then they interfere with as you're polishing, and then you may not be getting the results that you want. You may be really getting subpar results, right? So I, rec I recommend using a clay mitt or a traditional clay bar. You can even use an iron remover before you clay. That can help cut down the, the time uh, that it takes to clay. So once you've clayed the surface, the surface will be smooth. Your polisher will glide right over the paint, making it easier to achieve a flawless finish. So really never skip claying a car before polishing. It really helps to ensure the surface is contamination free, allowing for you to get the most out of your polish and to get a true result from, from your polishing efforts. Mistake number 11, maybe an under, another controversial one, but worrying about perfect paint before a coating. Uh, it's a mistake that often gets people stuck, worrying about achieving absolutely perfect paint before applying a coating. Look, perfection is subjective. It really is. Your perfect may not be the same as someone else's, and that's okay. That is totally okay. 
It's super easy to get hung up on these tiny imperfections when prepping a car for ceramic coating, but the reality is not every single scratch or blemish needs to be corrected. Get the paint as good as you reasonably can and don't drive yourself crazy chasing this perfection. It's about having fun. We're talking about car detailing. The key is to make sure the surface is clean and prepped properly. Detailing, again, should be enjoyable, not stressful. It's focused on getting the paint in great condition, not obsessing over every tiny defect. And your ceramic coating will still perform exceptionally well. So, because don't let this pursuit of perfection hold you back. Aim for great, not perfect. Enjoy the process. I know that's a little controversial, but hey, it's the reality of it. And the reality is that most people won't tell you, most detail shops won't even tell you, that the vast majority of their cars are not 100% perfect before they lay down the ceramic coating. I've seen horrible cars with ceramic coatings on them. But we get them as good as we, we can. And again, you know, someone's 75% perfect, maybe someone else is 65% perfect or vice versa. Someone's 75% perfect, maybe someone's 100% perfect, right? Get it as good as you can and enjoy the process. So mistake number 12, not maintaining your ceramic coated car. Ceramic coatings are amazing, but here's the thing. They're not maintenance free, regardless of what any brand has tried to tell you in the past. You cannot just coat a car and forget about it. Regular maintenance is key to maintaining your ceramic coating car lasts as long as possible. Just like maintaining your car without a ceramic coating is key to making your car look good for as long as possible. So you can use a pH neutral soap like the Super Soaper. We talked about that a lot. And avoid harsh chemicals that can degrade your coating. I will say a lot of these soaps out there that are ceramic coating soaps are just higher pH soaps that can actually degrade your ceramic coating. So be very careful with that. And every few months, I remember I recommend using a ceramic topper or a detail spray to refresh the hydrophobic properties and boost the protection. Me personally, I like the glow and depth of gloss that my products offer. So I use them even more often than that because I just enjoy using them, right? So use it as often as you want, but every few months I would recommend using your favorite topper of choice, right? Neglecting to maintain neglecting to maintain your ceramic coating um, will result in it breaking down faster than it should, and that's kind of dumb in my opinion. So a little bit of upkeep goes a long way in keeping your car looking great and protected for the long haul. Um, it's just smart. And those of you that are either listening to this in podcast form or watching this as a YouTube video, are into cars. So just maintain your car, maintain your ceramic coating. So whether you invested monetary and getting it done at a shop or you invested your time and money and did it yourself, it's only makes sense to just maintain that car yourself or maintain that, maintain that ceramic coating, make it last for as long as it possibly can. And that makes a whole heck of a lot of sense to me. Mistake Number 13, not cleaning your windows in different directions. So here's a tip that'll save you a lot of frustration. Clean your windows in different directions. Clean the windows, uh, clean the exterior windows in vertical strokes and the interior windows in hor horizontal strokes. I've talked about this so many times. This way you'll know exactly which side has streaks if they appear. So honestly, streaks can completely ruin a top-notch detail and they often appear when you least expect them. By cleaning the windows in different directions, you can quickly spot which side needs more attention, and this saves you a bunch of time and a bunch of fr frustration. So it's a simple tip, honestly, but it makes a big difference. So try it out, and you'll see how much easier it is to get streak-free windows. Um, again, whether you clean the outside in a vertical direction, horizontal on the inside, or vice versa, it just makes it really easy to spot where the streaks are, and then you're not kind of chasing your tail. So... Mistake number 14, I see so often, oh my gosh, not testing products in a small area first. So honestly, one of the biggest mistakes is probably should have been higher on the list, but there's no, these are just 15 mistakes that I thought of. They're not in any particular order. So one of the biggest mistakes I see is people applying a new product all over the car without testing it in a small inconspicuous area first. You always want to make sure the product is safe for your surface you're working on. Even if you're using the product you've used before, manufacturers, so often, I just had a text exchange with someone about this, manufacturers change the formulas without letting people know. 
okay? Or the surface could react differently than expected. So testing a small area first ensures you won't ruin, run into any surprises. So once you've confirmed the product works well and doesn't cause any damage or streaks or do anything weird, then you can confidently apply that to the rest of the car. So always, always, always test products on a small area first before a full application to avoid any damage or unwanted results. We finally made it to the end. Mistake number 15. And don't forget, I will list all these mistakes in the description below. And I will also link all the products that I talked about in the description below. So make sure that you head down there to check it out. So finally, mistake number 15. If you're drying your microfiber towels on high heat, no, no. High heat damages the delicate fibers of the microfiber cloths. Really, microfiber is just really small plastic and so or at least weaved in with really small plastic and that's why when you dry it on high heat it actually melts that plastic and it makes them less effective at picking up the dirt or drying the car so you know microfiber towels are essential for scratch free detailing we know that we're not using diapers and paper towel or diapers and uh, terry towels anymore but high heat breaks down those fibers it literally melts them and it actually makes them stiff and less absorbent. So you know this if you've ever accidentally dried your towels too much. So always dry your towels on low heat or honestly just air dry them to keep them in top condition. And if you take care of your microfiber towels, they'll take care of you. Low heat, no heat is really the way to go uh, to keep the fiber soft and effective. And there you have it, the 15 common detailing mistakes even the pros still make and how you can avoid them. Hopefully these tips will save you and help you detail smarter, protect your car better and avoid unnecessary headaches, which always seem to come. If you want to pick up any of the products in today's video, check out the links in the description below. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell so you never miss another detailing tip. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.